Hi everyone and welcome to the Simple Knit Podcast. My name is Eleanor and thank you so much for coming and spending some time with me today talking about knitting. I was going to say other fibre arts but that's just a lie. I just knit most of the time so it's just going to be knitting content here today. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Simple Knit Co if you want to keep up with what I'm making at the moment. Um, Content's a little thin on the ground uh, this fortnight. It's it's that time of year where the fact that you can find any time to do any kind of hobby is a mild miracle. So I do have a couple of things I wanted to share with you. So have my have my coffee, even though it's about a million degrees and I'm sweating already. Um, I have recorded this whole podcast episode um, just before, and then realised that just um on stage, stage right, stage right for me, um, you could see in the edge of the frame I have a box of razors sitting on my windowsill. Uh, and I thought, oh Eleanor, just ignore it, no one cares. But all I could look at when I was uh, watching the footage back was that little pink box of razors, which you could ask Eleanor, why is there a box of razors sitting on your windowsill? Um, but that's just the kind of just the kind of person I am. So shifted the frame left a little bit. There's nothing weird in frame apart from me. Uh, so let's just get get started again. If I look down, um, I've got my show notes on my computer screen just here. So if I am looking down, that's what I'm looking at. Um, but as I said, pour yourself your beverage of choice if it's after five. Have feel free to have a glass of wine. It's only eleven in the morning, so. Even though it's a Sunday, I've just got my coffee. Um, but before we get onto the knitting content, I just wanted to talk about this amazing t-shirt that arrived. I think it arrived last week in the post. Um, I'd seen it on Instagram and um, I bought it on Society6. The designer, her name I believe is Margot and she has the, her Instagram is 1010 Studios and she has a whole bunch of these really cool knitting related t-shirts um, and like a really fun knitting take on that be a t-shirt that every boy we all had a crush on in 2011 would wear um, but it's much cooler when it's about sheep and not about beer oh, beer's fine but sheep are better and um, so I, I love it I wish it was I wish I could wear it with my work uniform but unfortunately not not office appropriate um but i really love it and i definitely recommend uh checking out her society six page if you are looking for a fun knitting gift and it arrived surprisingly fast since it was coming from the other side of the world um but yeah i love it so on with the knitting um so i don't have any finished objects this week um i have some kind of finished objects that i'll share with you first one we have here so I do have just like a pile of knitting beside me um, in no particular order but I have here finally finally I have this sock um, I feel like I've been knitting it for a hundred years I checked on Ravelry and it's only been about two months but gosh oh gee was I happy to bind this sock off yesterday so it's just a simple ribbed sock that I'm knitting out of fiber spades Coop Knit Socks Yeah, try to say that three times fast, in the shade Obsidian. Um, I really love it, it's just a really pretty taupey, beigey, neutral sock colour. Um, I knit this on 2.25mm needles and uh, 64 stitches. Normally on 2.25s I would do 60 stitches, but because it's, it was a rib, and when I take it off the sock blocker, look. How ridiculous it looks that's not that's not a human sized leg um, but as the rib always stretches so on the sock blocker it looks a little less ridiculous um, I need it on my higher higher sharp sock needles and yeah standard heel flap little gusset and yeah as I said this is my um, this has been my on-the-go project for the last little while. I always like to have 
usually a sock because it's so nice and small and uh, portable but I like to have something that just a project that just lives in my handbag so I don't have to worry about remembering to put knitting in my bag uh, when I'm out and about I all know I always, will always have knitting with me um, but uh, regular viewers of the podcast will know that I am nursing a broken ankle at the moment it is going really well um, I'm allowed to wait there on it now which is just the angels could sing from heaven I'm so happy um, but because of that I'm not really out and about much but um, I managed to get a big a big chunk of this of the foot of this done yesterday we had a little family lunch kind of for my cousin's birthday and a bit of an early Christmas um, my auntie and uncle were up from Victoria so we just had a nice family lunch um, but my cousins live just shy of an hour's drive away so had some good car knitting time and then also some nice sitting around chatting knitting time so I was able to get this sock done and I'm just so I'm just I can't believe it's done it's been <laughs> I've been knitting on it for so long I just I'm so stoked that I don't have to knit it anymore it does need a friend um, but I'm just gonna hold off before I cast on its buddy I think um, so the other kind of finishedy thing I have to talk about um, last week I had talked about my kind of gift knitting plans uh, for my mostly for my colleagues and my family members are people that were not really exchanging gifts but I just wanted to have a little something to give them um, I've been using the pattern by Kathy Lewinsky who is just crafty enough on Instagram and I believe that's the name of her blog as well um, been using her pattern for her mitten garland advent calendar um, which is really cute uh, so what I've just been doing is using the pattern for those take the numbers off because I'm not making not making 24 I'm just making them as little tree ornaments and I do have um, some of them did go to their homes yesterday um, I gave them to some of my family members but I do have one finished one to show you what they look like so I've seamed the top shut because they don't need to, nothing needs to go into them and when it's a tiny mitten that's not going to go on a hand uh, there's some really interesting yarn carrying going on in there so I just closed them up and as you can see little hand little thumb and then I've just used the two tails from the cast on edge to make the little hanging loop um, I was going to do like a crochet chain or a little um, eye cord or something but then just couldn't be bothered to be honest and I think that's it's just going to keep it hanging on the tree it doesn't need to be anything fancy and that's pretty substantial I am using uh, probably the worst possible yarn to use for color work I'm using a um, cotton acrylic blend from spotlight which is the um, uh, local craft shop just a chain store in Australia craft shop but I didn't want to use anything that was going to be any sort of high maintenance or any sort of risk involved with it um, when it's going to be living in a box in a probably someone's cupboard for 11 months of the year I don't want it to be anything that was going to do anything funky so these all stay nice for for a reasonable period of time and they're just really cute really really cute I did have some red ones but they all seem to get given away yesterday so I've got a couple of thumbless mittens because that's kind of what I've been doing is knitting a bunch of them and then having a little thumb party where I finish off the thumbs there you go it's another cute little green one I've got this cute little gray one gray and white which is really pretty and then I have the cuff of another one that I cast on yesterday I did this, some of this in the car as well as the sock yesterday so yeah and I said that's probably like 30 to 40 minutes of knitting so they're really quick to do up you can kind of do a mitten, a mitten in an evening which if you have a few people that you want to make gifts for it's just quite a doable quite a doable project so um, I think kind of just keeping a vague tally in my head of how many I need and then I also want to have a couple of extra because they're really good to just be able to throw them in your bag if you're going somewhere and not sure if people are going to have gifts because that's always awkward it's always awkward when someone gives you something and you don't have anything for them so 
throw a couple of little mittens in your bag and you're covered. Um, but I'm really happy, really happy with these, how these are turning up. Um, really nice gift because it's handmade so people get, non-makers get, everyone gets excited for a handmade gift, but non-makers in particular look at you like you're some sort of wizard, which is, that is the aura I like to cultivate wherever I go, uh, wizard-like. So I'm really, really stoked that these are going to be some really nice, easy gifts to give to people for Christmas this year. So that's all for my kind of finished objects for this fortnight, but I do have a couple of projects that I have been working on. So first of all, um, I don't think I spoke about this last time, it had kind of been off rotation, but um, I did pick it up this week because I had a sudden burst of motivation because I really, I just really want to be able to wear this garment. This is the um, Deauville Tank by Tina C. It's from the summer issue of Pom Pom Quarterly magazine. I believe it's number 25, um, but I'll have it all linked down below. And it's just this really, really cool tank top. So I apologize the lighting is a little bit crazy. I just have a window over there. And it's a bit of a weird overcast day, but we will we will persevere. Um, so you have these little pearl ridges that create this really cool effect with the horizontal stripes, create like a little sh vertical shadow stripe that I think is just super cool. So I've separated, I finished the body, I've separated for the armholes, the back's just on a separate cable, it's really hard to see with the stripes, that's what it looks like on the inside of the colour work guts um, and I'm just doing the armhole decreases at the moment. I did look at the pattern and there's no kind of um, picking up stitches around the neck or the armholes so kind of once you're done three needle bind off the shoulders together you're finished which is very exciting because I believe I've spoken before about how I feel about picking up stitches um, but yeah I just love I love 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 this tank top so much so I'm knitting it on five millimeter needles I believe yes five millimeter needles from my liquor interchangeable set and I believe that's the recommended needle size but it could be wrong and I've got I'm knitting it in the same yarn as the set as the um, sample which is wool and the gang shiny happy cotton cinder black and purple haze um, this really pretty pale purple that I'm really really enjoying. I really love this colour. Um, so it has this kind of cool TV staticky kind of effect and during the week I just had this sudden burst of just really really wanting to have this finished. Um, so it's definitely now, I'm usually more of a process knitter, I just enjoy knitting um, but this has very quickly become a product knit. I just really really want this really cool top I think it'll just be really so easy and versatile to wear. Um, it's just like a worsted weight cotton yarn and um, this particular one is not, it's not too kind of splitty, it's not, it doesn't have that weird um, dusty feel that some cotton yarns can have as far as cotton yarns go. This is quite a good one. So I'm really happy, hopefully, I don't know, if I grow an extra set of arms and do all the knitting I want to do, might have a finished one to show you next time. But I'm just really, really happy with that one. The other garment that I've been working on is also has made appearances the last couple of episodes. And that is my Christmas tree tank top. So to quickly summarise, I'm using the chart from the Yulgren sweater by Andy Satterland. And I'm plonking that on the front of a, um, of a v-necked linen tank top. And I'm using the outline from Karen Sloper's um, Sloper tank to draft that to draft that tank top so I showed you the finished front piece last week and now I'll show you the back piece which is not very exciting to look at it's just like a giant green thing um, it's knit in reverse stockinette oh that colors a bit weird if you knit in reverse stockinette I've um, done the armhole decreases I'm just knitting up the back and um, not too long to go now till I just do the neck shaping and then hopefully all I'll have to do is a three needle bind off across the shoulders I've got the um, shoulder stitches oh, 
Wow, I'm very pale. That better? <laughs> I've got the shoulder stitches for um, the front piece on just on holders, so I can do a three needle bind off on the shoulders um, and then seam up the sides and see how it goes. Um, I did say last time, I'm not really sure how the neck and arm holes are going to fare because it is in reverse stockinette, so the fabric's kind of wanting to curl the opposite way you would want it to. Um, and I'm not sure how it's going to sit. So as I said, I'll just get it done. Ooh, someone jumped on the roof. <laughs> I get it done and give it a bit of a wear, see how it goes and see if I need to pick up and uh, do any edging on the neck and armholes. Um, the yarn that I'm using, where is some for me to show you? Here we go. It's the um, Cartier Linen Yarn, which is a linen cotton blend in this really pretty colour. It's called Sage. Um, and I'm holding this, it's about a DK weight, I think, and I'm holding it double and knitting on sixes, six millimetre needles from my Licker Interchangeable set. So, I'm really, another one that now is just a product knit, I am at the stage, both of them are kind of at the stage where the light is at the end of the tunnel and you just want the garment to so, sew. If only I didn't have to go to work and could grow an extra set of arms and just knit all the time, I would have some very cool projects. But unfortunately, that's not the case. I do have one more work in progress to share with you. That is a new cast on, which, I mean, I have a thousand other things I want to finish and a thousand obligation gifty knits that I should be working on. Excuse me, I've got a bit of a tangle here. There we go. Um, but... Knitting is my hobby. I do this for fun. So if I want to cast something on, I'm just going to go for it. And I did that with this amazing yarn that finally arrived. It sailed across the seas to me and I finally got, um, it finally was delivered this week. Um, I think the courier driver that delivers in our area that um, comes to my office thinks I'm insane for how excited I was when he came with this tiny package. Um, but it is this beautiful yarn from um, Ashley of Nomadic Yarns um, and that is what it looks like in the cake. This is the sh a new colour of hers called Honey Bear and this is what it looks like knit up. Oh my gosh. It is just too cute. So it's got this pretty golden brown, this nice rich chocolate and then a dusty pink and a mint green. Um, when I actually had the prototype of this yarn on her podcast a little while ago, um, the Knit Along podcast, I saw it and was like, mm, I'm going to need that. <laughs> it is just so cute. And I'm just knitting a plain um, vanilla sock out of these ones. So I'm on two millimeter needles, 64 stitches. I've done my little two by two rib for about 20 rows. I like a nice decent length cuff on my sock. So I've got 20 rows of 2x2 two two rib and I've just started the stockinette body. I'm thinking I'll probably do a fish lips kiss heel for these babies. Um, but yeah, it was one of those things sometimes yarn just comes and you know you just you just have to look at it knit up right away. And it's just so, these colours are just so cute and they look so pretty together. Ashley just has such a good eye for um, what colours to put together in self-striping um, yarns. She really, really has quite a gift for them and so I just, I love them. Um, this is her, I believe, I, which base is this on? This is her trusty sock base, which is 75% uh, merino, 25% nylon. Um, and yeah, I just absolutely love it and it was worth paying the shipping for one ball just to get this yarn. Um, so yeah, as you can see by the fact that I keep staring at it, I love it so much and I'm so glad this will be my new, um, on the go knitting. Um, but as I said, not on the go very much, probably just going to knit on this all the time anyway. I do have one more thing to talk about before I let you go today and that is a very imminent cast on. Um, so last episode I was talking to you about the Yarn & Co Make Along. Um, which is a yarn shop in Melbourne who the ladies there are running a make-along 
throughout the summer months here in Australia, so that's December, January, February, uh, to make kind of a, to make garments in preparation for winter so that when the cold weather comes along, which here is usually mid-April and cold is definitely relative, uh, you'd probably laugh at me if you knew how not cold it is when I get out my knits. But um, so when, when the cold weather comes along, you have a beautiful projects ready to go. Um, so I did talk about kind of the projects I was thinking about knitting last time and I finally made the decision, bit the bullet, bought the yarn and I am yet to cast on but I have wound my yarn ready to go. So um, the pattern I decided on was one of the ones I spoke about last time. It's the Ginsberg Shrug by Nora Gorn. And it's just a beautiful, big, drapey, cabled shrug made out of Brooklyn Tweed Quarry. Um, it's got shorter sleeves, which is, for the climate I live in, very sensible. Um, having kind of a really heavyweight wool all over jumper situation isn't going to be the most wearable option. So, But having a nice loose shrug that you can kind of wrap yourself in when it's a bit chilly um, is kind of, will be absolutely perfect. And I didn't realise until I actually read the pattern that the colour that I picked um, is the same colour as the sample. So um, with the projects I'm showing you today, I'm being a bit of a copycat at the moment, but um, so the sample is knit in Brooklyn Tweed Quarry in the Serpentine colourway, which is one that I picked up, which is this amazing dark kind of olivey bottle green. How am I going to? Yeah, yeah, close enough. So it's really pretty, like olive green, but really super dark. And it is so lovely. And it just has these little tiny occasional specks of lighter greens and blues and yellows, which just give the really dark yarn a nice little bit of movement. So I have wound up some balls ready to go. And Quarry always makes me laugh when it's been wound into a ball. It just looks so funny. Uh, let me see if there's some bits. Here we go. Over here you can kind of see some little speckles of yellow in there. It's just a really pretty, really interesting colorway. So I did start to, after I wound this ball up, I did start to swatch for it, but um, if you've ever worked with Quarry before, you'll know it's kind of, because it's almost it's very lightly spun so it is quite delicate it com comes if you're a bit of a vice like knitter like me it can rip um, quite easily and yeah you just have to alter your how you're holding the yarn your how you're tensioning your yarn you have to do them a little do that a little bit differently just to cater for the um, the nature of the yarn um, which is fine but I think the day I started swatching I was just in a weird mood and I was struggling to get gauge and the fabric was looking a bit funny and it's one of those things when you know you're in a bit of a weird mood and you're not knitting the way you normally do not great swatching that's not a great time to do swatching so hopefully I'm going to do some swatching imminently and we will have a really great shrug I just really it's another one I just really can't wait to start knitting on it so that's about all the content I have for you this week. If you are doing any frantic gift knitting, please let me know down below or come and say hi on Instagram and Ravelry. I'd love to talk all things knitting with you. Um, thank you so much for taking some time to have a chat with me today. And I look forward to seeing you in the next episode or in the comments or on Instagram or Ravelry. So I hope you have a great rest of your weekend. Take care and I'll see you in a few weeks. Bye.